If you've ever tried texturing clones in Cinema 4D with Redshift, you might notice when applying a procedural texture using noise that the texture repeats across your clones. There are a couple ways to fix this, but I'm going to show you the easy way. Let's get to it. So to demonstrate what I'm talking about here, I just have a simple setup with some cubes that are cloned uh, in a typical grid array. You'll notice that the texture obviously repeats across all of them. And uh, generally, this is not what you want. The obvious way to fix something like this is to simply create a copy of whatever you're trying to clone, in this case, a cube. Make sure it's in the cloner and basically make a copy of whatever material and apply that material, go into the material and change the noise, change something about the noise to add variation. So in this case, I'm going to simply change the offset in all three axes. And if we go back to our render view here, you'll see we've added, added some variation. Now this is pretty good, um, but if you look closely, you can still see that some of them repeat. Here, here, and here, 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 and here. It's just not quite as obvious on the first read, but on a second read, it becomes very obvious. So it's not a perfect solution. Now we could add more copies of the cubes, make a third one and do the same procedure. But the more clones that we have, the less effective this becomes. So what's a better way to do this without having to make a whole bunch of copies of whatever you're trying to clone? Well, let's see how that's done. First, I'm going to get rid of that cube that I made a copy of. I'm going to go back into my shader graph. Nice little trick when you're trying to maximize one of the palettes or windows in Cinema 4D is to click on the um, little hamburger menu, but you but alt click on it and that will maximize it. You can also control click on it to minimize it. Um, but that's not what we wanted to do in this case. In this case, we want to maximize it. Uh, and if you need to bring back the things that it minimized when you maximize one of the windows, you just click on the other windows and that brings it back to the previous state. But uh, we want to maximize it, so we're going to alt click on the hamburger menu, bring up our shader graph, give us more space to work. And uh, it's a pretty simple material. It's just two materials going into a material blender with a Maxon noise uh, being used to blend them together. So what we're going to need to add some variation to these clones are two nodes. First one is a data node. It's specifically the integer user data node. And the second thing that we need, our second node that we need, is a math node. And it's going to be the scalar multiply. So scalar multiply. And these are the only two you're going to need. On the user integer, integer data, we're going to go to the attribute name and we're going to go to the drop down, no graph, object ID. And then for the, we're going to pipe that output into the input, into the first input of the multiplier. And then we're going to take that output of the multiplying node and put it into the input coordinate offset of the noise. At first, you're not going to really see any difference. They still basically look the same. And the reason for that is if we go back to our multiplying node, we're multiplying all the object IDs by zero. So they're all basically getting set to zero and that's being piped into the offset. So there won't be any difference between them. But if we multiply by something say like 100 and then we go back and check our render view, you'll notice that all the textures now look different from each other. And the reason for this is that what the integer user data does is it gets the uh, indexed ID of each object, which means that behind the scenes, all these objects have their own ID associated with them numerically, starting from zero and counting all the way up to nine in this case, or I'm sorry, eight in this case, because it starts at zero. And then we take that object ID, multiply it by a hundred to make sure that there's a large enough gap in between each of the numbers, and then we pipe that into the offset. So for instance, the first uh, object is zero times a hundred. So that gets offset by zero. The second object is one times a hundred, which gets offset is going to be a hundred in all three axes. And then two gets multiplied by 100, which is 200, three to 300 and so on and so forth. 
the end result is that all our clones have textures that are offset by different amounts. And the beauty of this solution is that no matter how many clones you have, the solution is going to work. Uh, it could be nine clones or nine million clones. And this works for any procedural setup involving noise. Uh, one gotcha that I've kind of come across myself, and I'm not exactly sure why this happens sometimes, is that with energy user data, sometimes I'll choose the graph object ID, but it won't actually register the difference here. And I'm not really sure why that is, um, but usually what I do to fix that is to just go to objects, object ID, which doesn't work, but then go back to MoGraph object ID, and then it works. Why it doesn't work the first time? Again, not really sure, but that seems to fix it if it doesn't work. In either case, that's how we use Redshift to add variety to cloners the easy way. If you have any questions about anything you saw in this tutorial, feel free to comment below. Also, I'll be releasing some new tutorials pretty soon. Uh, if you have any ideas for any things you'd like to see, also feel free to comment below.